put up. You're going to put it up here? Yeah. Okay, good. This is Women of Grace Live, discussing issues important to your life and faith. Spiritual insight, practical wisdom. Join us as we transform the world one woman at a time. Women of Grace, for such a time as this. Now, here's your host, Johnette Bankovic. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Women of Grace Live. I am Johnette Bankovic. How wonderful it is to be with you on this holy Thursday. As you can see, I am up here on the campus of EWTN in Irondale, Alabama, and it's always great to be able to broadcast right here from the EWTN studios. For those of you who are out there on social media, you see that. For those of you that are listening, of course, you don't see that, but that is where I am, and I thank and praise God for the opportunity to use these airwaves for his honor and for his glory. We do want to invite you to give us a call and join our program today. I love to start the program by giving you those wonderful numbers. If you are in North America, we have a toll-free number for you, and that is available for you to use all throughout the broadcast today. It's 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-EWTN. 3986. Invite you to pick up the phone, give us a call. Love to use the, you know, the little um, uh, alphabetic uh, values for those numbers because it's so easy to remember. It is 833-288-E WTN. If you're outside of North America, we do have a number for you as well. And that number is country code 1-205-271-2985. That's country code 1-205-271. 271-2985. want to remind you that uh, we've got Matt Gabensky out there. He's doing our call screening today. We always encourage you to say howdy hey to him. Also have Jeff Burson producing the program today and doing our social media. Oh, you know what else? Ah, gee whiz, I want to tell you this. We would love for you to send us your questions by email as well, and then we'll get to them right here in the program. You can email your questions to womenofgrace at EWTN.com, womenofgrace at EWTN. Dot com. Got a couple of things for you as we begin the program today. Uh, received, uh, you know, a bit of a disturbing kind of uh, communication yesterday that came from someone who heard their deacon refer to Holy Thursday, the day that we celebrate the washing of the feet. And the person who sent me this email was uh, uh, really concerned about that because that's not what Holy Thursday is all about. And uh, it was interesting because uh, this person happens to know uh, his catechesis very well, and he understands that Holy Thursday is all about the institution of the Eucharist and giving us the sacrament of holy orders, right? So this morning when I was in my time of prayer, I was looking at divine intimacy, and I didn't have my book with me, but I have it on my phone. And uh, I think that this is an updated version, so I don't know if this exactly matches the divine intimacy that we normally use. But I wanted to read this to you, and and because I think it's important for us to to understand what this beginning of the Triduum is truly all about. And uh, in in this particular uh, uh, rendition of divine intimacy, uh, it's uh, Meditation 150, which may not correspond to the hard text, but this is what it says. It is always the Lord Jesus who accomplishes the act of consecration in the person of his minister. It is always the Lord Jesus who accomplishes the act of consecration in the person of his minister. And today, the anniversary of the institution of the Eucharist Okay, Holy Thursday is what? The anniversary of the institution of the Eucharist and of the eve of his death. It takes on a moving actuality. Jesus, having loved his own who were in this world, loved them to the end, says John, in the beginning of his account of the Last Supper. On the night when he was betrayed, adds Paul, referring to the institution of the Eucharist, The contrast is tremendous. So we've got these two quotes that are coming to us from sacred scripture that uh, Father Gabriel of St. Mary Magdalene is making reference to. The one coming from St. John's Gospel, having loved his own who were in this world, he loved them to the end. And St. Paul says on the night when he was betrayed. So now what he's going to do, he's going to talk about those two. He says the contrast is tremendous. On the part of Christ, infinite love to the end until death. On the part of men, betrayal, denial, 
abandonment of Christ. He says the Eucharist is the Lord's answer to betrayal by his creatures. He seems so impatient to save men who are so weak and unfaithful that he mystically anticipates his death by offering them as nourishment that body which he will soon sacrifice upon the cross and that blood which he will shed even to the last drop. Although death will shortly wrest him from the earth, his presence will be living and real in the Eucharist until the end of time. That is what we celebrate today. That is what we commemorate. That is what is the anniversary of today. He says this, he continues, Together with the sacrament of love, Jesus left his church the witness of love, his new commandment. Suddenly, the twelve saw the master kneeling before them in the manner of a servant. Quote, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. The scene ended with a warning. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. And then this statement. It was not so much a matter of imitating his physical act, the washing of the feet. That's not what's really important. (laughs) (laughs) It's important for us to know that that's not what's really important. He says that was not so much a matter of imitating his physical act as it was of their attitude of sincere humility in their relations with one another. That's what Jesus was drawing their attention to. Humility, serving the needs of others. He goes on and says, they were each to consider and behave to each other as though each were the servant of the other. That was the point. Only humility like this will make it possible to fulfill the command that Jesus is about to give. And what is that command? A new commandment I give to you that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. He continues, the washing of the feet, the institution of the Eucharist, and his death on the cross indicate how and to what point we must love our brothers in order to fulfill the Lord's command. We must be humble. We must give our lives for the other. We must be willing to be of service to each. And a beautiful little prayer here ends this, O good Jesus, to awaken our love, you resolve to remain with us here below. You knew beforehand the death they would make you die and the dishonors and insults you would suffer. O eternal Father, how could you consent that your Son remain among us every day to suffer? O God, help me. What great love from the Son and what great love from the Father. It continues, O eternal Father, how is it that you consented? Why do you desire to see your Son every day in such wretched hands? How can you in your compassion now see him insulted day after day? Why must all our good come at his expense? Should there not be someone to speak for this most loving lamb? O Holy Father in heaven, since nothing remained for your divine son to do, and he left sinners a gift as great as this most holy Eucharist, be pleased, O merciful Lord, to provide a remedy that he may not be thus badly treated, and that, since he provided a means so good, that we may offer him many times in sacrifice, this precious gift may avail, that there will be no advance made in the very great and evil disrespect committed and shown in places where this most blessed sacrament is present. A prayer given to us by a great saint, St. Teresa of Avila. So just some thoughts that I thought I'd share with you today in light of the communication that I received yesterday. Uh, There is more to share with you. And I think what we'll do now is we will um, go to a break. And when we come back, more right here on Women of Grace Live. I'm Janet Bankovic with you from Irondale, Alabama in the EWTN radio studios on campus here. Looking forward to being with you, uh, 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-288. 3986. Give us a call. We're going to be right back. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone. I'm Johnette Benkovic, inviting you to join me and women from around the country for a weekend of formation 
fellowship and fun at our annual Women of Grace Retreat at the breathtaking Malvern Retreat House during the weekend of July 13th through 15th. Our theme is Embracing the Holy Duet, Mary and the Holy Spirit, and features fabulous speakers, Kathleen Beckman, Father Philip Scott, Jack Williams, Thomas K. Sullivan, and yours truly. The retreat includes Mass, Adoration, Confession, Talks, Reflection Time, a Healing Service, and some special surprises. It is preceded by the Benedicta Leadership Enrichment Seminar entitled Women, God's Special Weapon Against Evil with Kathleen Beckman, Susan Brinkman, and Father Philip. We are thrilled to offer you our very first Young Women of Grace One Day Retreat on Saturday, July 14th. See you there. Visit womenofgrace.com for details or call 800-558-5452. March 29th, St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, Edith Stein, said, In three different ways, woman can fulfill the mission of motherliness. In marriage, in the practice of a profession that values human development, and under the veil as the spouse of Christ. Let us reflect. Which way has God selected for me to fulfill my mission of motherliness? How am I cooperating with His grace? If you'd like to receive a daily grace line by email, go to womenofgrace.com and click on the word grace line. Then click on the box receive grace lines. That's womenofgrace.com. Join in on the conversation. The Women of Grace phone lines are open. 1 833 288 EWTN 1 833 288 3986 Welcome back, friends. You are listening to Women of Grace Live. I am Janet Bankovic, and I am thrilled to be with you today. Certainly am inviting you to give us a call. Please pick up the phone and punch in these numbers, 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. Did you know that you can text us? You can text EWTN to 55000. That's 55. Zero zero zero. Do want to remind you that uh, we have a beautiful opportunity for you right here on EWTN Radio. It will be tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. from Rome, The Way of the Cross with Pope Francis. So we certainly do invite you to get out to EWTN.com slash radio and get a complete listing of all of the special programming that is coming up for you right here via EWTN Radio. So that is tomorrow evening, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, The Way of the Cross with Pope Francis. You might want to Set some kind of a little alarm or a little reminder in your phone so that you don't forget about the marvelous programming that is coming up. Uh, You'll want to take advantage of it, I'm quite certain. So we're talking about texting. I just gave you the way that you can text us, and we do have a text from Ellie. And Ellie says, uh, can you expound on what exactly is meant when Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord. Well, I love to expound on this because it's such a beautiful, beautiful reality. And what our Blessed Lady is saying there is that she is extolling this God and Father. Uh, She is extolling the one who has created her in his image and likeness. And she is expounding upon the fact there or stating there that, that her soul becomes a means by which we can see the movement of grace of God more clearly. We can see God by looking at her. What is meant by that? We can see the wonders that he desires to do in our lives. We can see the great gift of the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ by looking at her, this humble woman. I like to use this example. You know, um, I am of an age where I need to wear readers. And for those of you that are out there on social media, you can see I have my readers on right now, right? And why do I wear these readers? Do they actually change the reality of, of the of the, the words on the page? No, it doesn't in any way do that. But what it does is it magnifies those words so that I can see them more clearly. Well, in a certain sense, that is Mary's soul. Uh, it, it's a great analogy because what she does then with her soul, when we look at Mary, she helps us to see God more clearly. We see him uh, in greater detail. We see his providence. We see his love. We see his glory, right? So that is what she's talking about there. Her soul magnifies the greatness of the Lord, magnifies it, shows it, reveals it. So 
it makes it clear to us, right? So that is what uh, I believe is meant by that beautiful uh, reference that we find in the Gospel of Luke uh, at Mary's Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has done great things. And she goes on with that beautiful Magnificat. So I hope that that helps you today, Allie. I certainly hope that it does. Uh, Once again, let me give you those numbers, 833-288-3986. That's 833-288-EWTN. It's the way that you can join us live here. Uh, We've got Toby with us. He's out there in Morgantown, West Virginia, listening to us via Light of Life today. Good morning, Toby. How are you on this holy Thursday? Well, Jeanette, um, it's a little tough right now. Uh, my my mother is uh, in the hospital, oh. and she's uh, on she's on a ventilator, oh. um, and she's been on it for about a week. And uh, I just thought I'd call, maybe ask for some prayers from you, and the audience. Um, we're gonna have to make some decisions probably here in the next couple of days because the prognosis isn't looking good for any type of improvement. Oh, I'm so, so sorry, Toby. This is a uh, tough situation, and um, these decisions are always difficult. Uh, And I'm sure that you have gotten guidance and direction from the church with regard to the decision that you might be facing. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, it talks with us about using extraordinary means to keep uh, an individual alive. And this would be the case with a ventilator and and these kinds of of, uh, uh, machinery. Always the hope is that it will help the individual then to be able to uh, regain the capacities uh, on their own. But sometimes that isn't the case. And so the, right. the, the general thumbnail of the church is that if the, if the you know, prognosis is such that the uh, use of these mechanical means is greater than the benefit that can hope to be realized, then it is considered to be extraordinary means. That does not apply to food and water. But it certainly does apply to these these other things. Um, so yes, yes, yeah. So, uh, what is your mom's name, Toby? It is Sharon. Sharon. Okay. And do you have other siblings, or are you an only child? Um, I have two brothers, and my younger brother is is the one that needs to make the medical power of attorney decision. He or he's a, is a medical power of attorney. Okay. Um, and, and as you said, I, I just actually left meeting with my priest. At Good the church, you. and Good he you. actually advised me just just as you did, same thing from the catechism. Right. Good. So. Good. I'm so I want to be good. I want to be good advice to him when he wants to discuss the decision. Yeah, and and is your brother open to taking into consideration what the church teaches on this matter? He he is. He's not uh, Catholic or any practicing type of religion, but he's he's open to you know with the other discussions we've had. I, I had a father come and. You know, pray with mom, mm-hmm. and they were open to that. He was open to that as well. Is your mom Catholic? She's not. Okay, no. so I'm sure the priest gave her a blessing, though, right? Yes, he did. Okay, that's good. Well, let's let's just lift up your mom. Let's lift up your brother, your other siblings. I'm so grateful that he is open to receiving advice and counsel from you. I, I think that's a beautiful, beautiful uh, sign of the cohesiveness of your family and the unity of your family. And it's not always the case. And it's always so very sad when you have these kinds of uh, tensions that will surround the deathbed of, of an individual and how beautiful that that's not your case. Um, that's a testimony to your mom and how well she's raised you children. So, Father God, we do come before you in this moment and we lift up to you, your daughter, Sharon. Father God, you know that you made Sharon in your image and likeness. And that even as you were aware of that moment in time when you would give her life in this world, You were also aware of that moment in time when you would call her back to you. And so I would ask, Father, that you would send the Holy Spirit to Toby, to his brother, who is the decision maker, to his other siblings, and that all of them together would be in accord with this, but that they would also have a supernaturalized uh, sense of that timing that you have in mind for your daughter, Sharon. I ask that they would neither lag behind that timing nor advance forward uh, beyond it, but that they would be in sweet harmony with your most perfect will for your daughter. 
I pray for Sharon even now. I ask that you would uh, be sending her abundant graces. I, I would ask that even though she is not Catholic, that y- she would have a recognition of the spiritual mother who is our Blessed Lady. Certain am I that she is at her side. And I ask that her guardian angel would be known to her in this moment too, that she would not feel abandoned or forsaken, that she would have uh, 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 peace in her heart, peace in her soul, that she would not be anxious, but rather through the ministry of Our Lady, the Holy Spirit, and her guardian angel, she would feel a, a, a sweet, sweet disposition of heart and heaven's love for her. I ask that her passing would be gentle. I ask that if this be the moment that uh, she would be readied for it so that she can be embraced by you for all eternity. I pray for for Toby and for his siblings. Uh, I pray that even as they grieve their mother in this moment, that when that moment does come for them to release her back to you, that they would also feel this consolation that comes from the provision that you've made ready for them. I thank you, Father, for the beauty of of this moment. I thank you for the beautiful gift of unity that these lovely men and women of God are displaying. And I ask you uh, to continue to knit them together uh, as they step forward in this most, most important moment in time. And so it is that on this Holy Thursday, when we are so aware of the mystery of our salvation, we ask for the salvation of your daughter, Sharon, as we intercede and pray through the paternal beatitude of Our Lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for Sharon now and at the hour of her death. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Well, Toby, we'll be with you in prayer, okay? Thank you for those beautiful prayers, Jeanette, for my mother. Oh, you're so very, very welcome. And I'll tell you, you know, tonight um, when I am at the Lord's Supper, um, I will remember her and you in my Eucharistic offering, okay? Thank you so much. You're so welcome. God be with you, Toby. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you, too. Bye-bye now. You know, um, it is especially poignant, I think, when we lose loved ones during the Lenten season or the uh, the Easter season. Uh, There's some special mark on that 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 is forever made in our hearts. And I I know I oftentimes uh, am more uh, aware of the passing of my loved ones who passed during Lent and in the octave of Easter uh, on the on the on those particular dates in the liturgical calendar than than actually the um, you know the, the calendar date in in Kronos time. <laughs> I'm more aware of it in Kairos time, and so uh, this will always be marked for Toby and his siblings that you know these decisions were being made at this time of of the of the liturgical season, and uh, it will be a sweet reminder for them in in coming years. Uh, let's go to Adele. She's calling us from Houston, Texas, this morning, and she is with us via Guadalupe Radio Network. A shout out to all of the good people there in Houston, Joe McLean, and all of those good people at. Uh, uh, Houston Catholic Radio there. Hello, Adele. How are you? Hi, Janet. This is such a pleasure to, to talk to you. I, I have to say thank you so much for your ministry. Well, may it's, God be praised for that, huh? <laughs> thank you so much. It's You're because welcome. of uh, women like you and, of course, all of the EWTN programming that I developed my my, I furthered my, my love for our Blessed Mother, so thank you. Oh, I'm so glad. That makes me so happy inside, Adele. You can't tell, I can't tell you how much of a gift that is to me. Thank you. Oh, it's, it's amazing. We should go for coffee sometime and chat. It, 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 <laughs> it would amazing. be lovely. I would love that. <laughs> quick question. So, I know that you know your, your board is lit up. Uh, quick question. I've asked so many priests, uh, very, very devoted, you know, uh, scripturally strong men and women, and um, I've got an answer that is pretty much across the board, and I was just curious uh, to to hear your perspective. And here's okay. my question. Okay. Um, was Mary present at the Eucharist? So, well, you know, um, she's not specifically mentioned there. You know, she's not yes. mentioned there. Uh, and yes. um, 
It was the institution of the sacrament of holy orders. It was the institution yes. of the priesthood. Uh, so if Mary yes. was there, she would have been excluded from that reality, right? Um, you know, it, it's it's hard to believe that he would not, she would not have been there. But there's nothing that gives us indication that she was there. We just have what Scripture says, and I I don't okay. really know if any of the early histories uh, mention specifically that she was there or not. What have the priests right. told you, Adele? What have they told you? Um, I'm a very dear former pastor, you know, such a such a scholar. <clears throat> used to tell us, of course, she was there. You know, the the Passover was a family celebration. It was covenant with family. That's so, of right. course, you know, Jesus and the disciples and Mary and all the disciples and women and children and everybody would have been there at the Last Supper. And um, he he says uh, exactly, you know, as as you have um, um, pointed out, that yes, it is not mentioned because of the institution of the holy priesthood. And yes. uh, by definition, it has to be a male and celibate, all of that, right? That's right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So he says, um, yes, she would have been there, but not mentioned because of the uh, holy order. So yes. So you're also going with that, and, and that, that is what you, you know? Yes. Well, it seems oh, okay. to, it, it seems to me that that it would make sense that she would have been there, but yes. for the very reason that the priest said. So, we'll we'll right. just go with that until we find out otherwise, right? We can ask her. Yes. <laughs> we can ask our lady when we have the opportunity to see her in heaven. <laughs> I have a lot of questions, so, but I have a feeling that I'll just be too busy just taking in the glory of God to ask anything. <laughs> oh, absolutely! I'm just waiting to get up there. It's such a party up there. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just waiting, and you know, it's, it's going to be amazing. So, it really yeah. is. Well, you know, I, I do want to say this, Adele. You know, and I, just to share this with all of our listeners today. You know, what do you do in heaven? What, well, we know what you do in heaven. We we know that by the holy sacrifice of the mass when we pray the Sanctus, huh, exactly. right? Holy, 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 exactly. right? So, what's going on up there? People are praising, but we don't have to wait to heaven to begin praising the right. Lord. You know, we want to we want to learn how to praise him here. We just don't want to die. And at the moment of our particular judgment, as St. Peter said, well, you know, you did a pretty good job, but you just didn't get that praising down very well. So we're going to have this little <laughs> cherubim take you over to remedial praising 101. <laughs> you have to exactly. stay there a while, right? We want to get up there and be praising the Lord. So we should be lifting our hands in the air and just giving big shout outs to God and thanking him for everything that he gives to us, especially oh, absolutely. as and we come into this y- true I always have the. This is me and my weird brain. Um, <laughs> the the heaven is the eternal supper of the Lamb. So That's right. all my non-Catholic friends who you know can be uh, very vehement um, against, uh, shall we say, teachings of the Catholic Church, and I'm learning to to speak to them with love and charity and actual knowledge. Yes. I, I keep telling them, whatever you believe here, you get to heaven. Oh, you're Catholic then. <laughs> so. Well, so bad, please. No, that that really isn't bad. <laughs> you know, in the end, everybody it, it will be one in, in the mystical exactly. body of our Lord. We'll be there with him, right? Exactly. So it's exactly. the fulfillment. And celebrating the mass. It's the fulfillment so of his, you want his to church. Now you want to start then? <laughs> <laughs> and how do they respond Thank to you, you Adele? Are they happy for what with what you have to say? <laughs> Thank you so much. God You're welcome. You, the work hands and you know ew2 and the entire family well thank you 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 just you just help so many people and more than you'll ever know oh thank you may god be praised well i'll tell you what we all need your prayers so please keep us in your prayers right that's absolutely thank you well god bless you have a beautiful blessed um holy thursday the entire freedom i'm so excited me too favorite favorite time of the year so yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it is mine, too. <laughs> well, God bless you. Someday maybe we'll have that cup of coffee. I'll enjoy that right with you there in yes. Houston. <laughs> Thank God, you. God bless Thank you, you, darling. Bye-bye now. Oh, my goodness. Well, we've got more to come for you here on Women of Grace Live today, inviting you to give us a call, 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986 right here in North America. That's your toll-free line. Remember, you can send us stuff out there on social media, too. Jeff Burson is working it. So get on out there and send your questions in that way. More when we come back from our break today. Again, it's great being with you on this beautiful, beautiful Holy Thursday as we commemorate the institution of the Eucharist and the priesthood. Amen. We'll be right back. This is a Lenten journey 
with Timothy Cardinal Dolan on EWTN Radio. God's blessings, everybody, this Holy Thursday. Do you notice in the gospel, there's a lot of talking, a lot of chattering, a lot of shouting as the passion and death and resurrection of Jesus unfolds. We've got the conversations and the debates of the apostles. We got the accusations of the Pharisees and Sadducees. We got the, the questions and interrogations of the Roman guards and Pilate himself. A lot of talking, a lot of shouting. We've got the ranting of the mob. And yet Jesus doesn't do much talking. Jesus is silent. Jesus prefers silence. The silence of the Garden of Gethsemane, the silence of the cross. Tonight, Holy Thursday, the ritual says all depart in silence as we spend quiet time before his real presence at the altar of repose. A Lenten Journey with Timothy Cardinal Dolan is available on DVD through the EWTN Religious Catalog. This DVD includes all 47 segments for each day of Lent and Easter Sunday. To get your copy, log on to our website, EWTNReligiousCatalog.com, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, or call 1-800-854-6316. Hi, I'm Johnette Benkovic. The world needs valiant women. The Women of Grace Benedicta Leadership Institute for Women at St. Cyril and Methodius Seminary, located in Orchard Lake, Michigan, seeks to train Catholic women to be active leaders and mentors for our day. The first of its kind, this program provides qualified applicants the opportunity to acquire a certification or graduate credit hours in Catholic women's leadership. Summer course information is available at benedicta.womenofgrace.com. Hi, this is Dr. David Anders. There are a lot of misconceptions about the Catholic faith. We clear them up on Call to Communion, coming up this afternoon, 2 p.m. Eastern on EWTN Radio. Now, back to Women of Grace with Johnette Benkovic. Be a part of Women of Grace. The phone lines are open. 1-833-288-EWTN. 1-833-288-3986. Welcome back, friends. We are looking forward to hearing from you. You just heard that number, but I'll give it to you again. It's 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. That's a toll-free number for those of you here in North America. We do have a number for you if you're not in North America and you want to call us. We do. Country code 1-205-271-2985. That's country code one. 1- Two zero five two seven one two nine eight five. 205 Take two follows us today, as you know, with Jerry and Debbie. And we certainly do invite you to stay tuned for that. Today, they're going to be asking this question. And you might even be thinking about your answer right now so that you can phone in and give it. Do you have a tradition on Holy Thursday? What do you do on Holy Thursday? What is your tradition? Do you have one? And if you do, what is it? And that is the question under discussion there today on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Uh, Amanda via YouTube is asking us a question today. And she is asking us, sometimes I am afraid uh, of moments of suffering that I don't have yet. So this is, yeah, Amanda, this is a difficulty. Uh, And sometimes we're afraid that we're going to be suffering in the future. But when we have those kinds of thoughts, we have to understand who is the perpetrator of those thoughts. Uh, Who is the perpetrator of that kind of fear? Who wants to keep us all bound up uh, in events that haven't even taken place yet and cause us to be worried and concerned about all of those kinds of things that may never happen? There's only one. And that person, as you know, uh, that, that, that demon is the devil and his minions. They stir us up. They want for us to be worried about events that haven't taken place yet. And there's a reason for that. They keep us uh, tied up uh, in, in this land of what if. And there's a spirit that rules that land, right? And, and here's the point. God is in the present moment. God is omniscient. He knows all things. He's omnipotent. He can do all things. He's all powerful. And God is omnipresent, which means that God is with us in the moment. He is here right now in the moment. Well, if God is here in the moment, where is God's grace? Is his grace in the past? Is his grace in the future? No. When the past was the present, God was there with his grace. When the future comes, it will be the present and God will be there with his grace. God's grace is in the present moment. 
Well, if the evil one has you all worried about things that haven't happened yet, if he gets your attention off of the present moment and begins to entice you with thoughts of negativity towards sufferings that haven't even occurred, you are not available to receive the grace that God has for you in this present moment. We read in sacred scripture not to be concerned about things that haven't happened yet because this present moment has troubles of itself. And God's grace for those troubles is there in the moment. In the future, should God entrust a portion of his son's cross to you? Then the grace to be able to embrace that suffering, that trial, that tribulation, the grace to be able to move through it, the grace to be able to be strengthened by it will be there in that moment. All right? And, and so we're called to be present to what is available to us now because it is there that we experience the provision of God and it's there that we experience growth and holiness through whatever today has in mind for us. And not even an hour from now or five minutes from now, but right this second, right this moment. There's also a demon that uh, follows us around. All of this came to by way of a good confessor. Uh, uh, his name is Father Kadricha. He was just wonderful. He explained all this to me. There is also a demon that wants to tie us to the, to the things of the past, make us live in regret, uh, a morbid kind of guilt, right? And we all have that. I mean, it's okay to, to be remorseful for sins that we've committed or uh, that have been committed against us to, to, to grieve those kinds of, of, of situations, but not to the extent that we brood and ruminate And that our entire attention is focused on the past. Because once again, that demon, woulda, shoulda, coulda, if only, that one will keep us tied up looking at past events. God isn't in the past. When the past was the present, he was there. But God is in the present right now. And he'll give us the grace to work out, to work out that that uh, that that regret, that to take his mercy that's available to us right now and apply it to that reality that exists, right? So that would be the way that I would advise you today is, you know, when those emotions come, when you start thinking, oh dear, what if, what if this would happen? What if that would happen? I used to be that way as, as a young mom worrying for my children, you know, worrying that something negative could happen to them. I, I fretted a lot about things like that. Uh, Gee, what a shame. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, emotion, a lot of energy uh, and, you know, very little appreciation for what God was giving me in the present moment. Um, The fact of the matter is when those when those attacks come because it's a type of attack and when that temptation is pressing hard on you, start to praise the Lord. We were talking about that before the break. Start to praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus, that all is well in this moment. Praise you, Jesus, that your grace is sufficient for me. Praise you, and I thank you, Father God, that provision is mine right now. I just praise you and thank you for every spiritual blessing in the heavens that I realize right now. And then start to list them. I praise you for the fact that everybody's well in my family. I praise you for the fact that, you know, my car's running. I praise you for the fact that that, that I have family around me. I praise you, Jesus, that I have food on my table. I praise and I thank you. And you go into praise, and, you know, the evil one cannot stand up under praise. Praise is the least used spiritual weapon in our arsenal. Do you know that? It is the least used. We should be using it all the time. When you have an idle moment, praise Jesus. When you're in the midst of a, of a big situation or problem, praise Jesus. Thank you for this. Thank you, because you're going to work such a great good out of this. Makes me near giddy, Lord. Thank you. Praise him. Have a grateful heart. Prevent, present your supplications to the Lord, but praise him in advance for what he's doing and what he's going to do. And, and then the evil one will flee. He cannot stand up underneath that. So if you're, you know, Amanda, it's, it's the best recourse I can offer you, the very best recourse, and it always works. It just plain always works. It takes our focus off of what is prevailing upon us. It puts our attention on God. It opens our heart to receive his blessings you know, and he inhabits the praises that we offer up to him. He comes and he occupies those praises. And we, we are lifted up. Plus, you know what? It makes us happy. And when we're happy, those happy hormones get emitted. And pretty soon 
we see that we have so much more to be grateful for. Thank you for your YouTube question today. I do want to remind you we are available for you out there on EWTN Radio's YouTube channel and Facebook page. All you have to do is put your question comment right there, and it comes right up to me uh, via Jeff Burson's good magic that he works that way. Let's go to Harold. He is in Silver Springs, Maryland today, and he is listening to us on the Amazon Echo. Oh, yes, we like Alexa. <laughs> hey, Harold, how are you? Hi, uh, Jenna. It's um, good to talk to you. It's Thanks. I, I had the blessing of meeting you a few years ago. Oh, good. Sure I remember, but um, I, I'm physically disabled. I'm on a ventilator, and I, um, you know, um, recently was hospitalized with aspiration pneumonia. And oh, my goodness, It took Harold. a lot of, out of me. It was like 40 days in the hospital, and they oh, gave my me goodness. Um, a lot of drugs, and uh, one of the drugs made me um, hallucinate, and for, for a while I was having these um, frightening dreams and, oh. and memories and thoughts, and I'm, I'm recovering now. But um, so glad you while I that. was in my delirium, I, um, somehow I broke my arm and uh, to make things worse. And um, just dealing with that, and uh, just it's, it's recovering, I'm, I'm healing, and but it's just like so many things all at, at once. And now I hear that um, I, I get nursing hours, and recently they cut my nursing hours. And mm. like um, I live at home with my elderly parents, and oh there's only goodness. so much they can do. And, right. and and just today they they gave me a uh, kind of a notice saying that um, the state won't give me any any more additional hours, which which I need. It's, they're critical to my my care and my quality of life. I, you know, I used to be able to go out and do things, and, and now it's, you know, all these things are happening, and it's like, you know, I wanted to go to Holy Thursday Mass, and I can't even do that right now. So um, to just would ask for, for prayers, and also, you know, through it all, I, I just seem to be, I don't, I'm not at the brink of despair. I mean, I, I have moments of sadness, but I feel like God is, I mean, I, I don't know how to explain it sometimes. I feel like he's not, I don't even know if he's there, but other times I feel like he's so close mm -hmm. to me and like I'm, I'm with him and he's, he's with me and, you know, it's his cross. I'm just tagging along. I was a uh, priest told me once who was suffering himself. So, um, you know, I, I just, you know, sometimes I feel like, I don't even love God, and I just, and I just get confused, and just like, you know, I I don't know, like, you know, and I know sometimes I worry that like at the end I might like lose it and just curse God or something. But I don't want to do that, you know. Um, so, just advice on how to like just proceed, and sometimes. I feel like I can't even, I don't know how to pray and just, you know, just would like some prayers and some advice. Well, we will pray, Harold, but, you know, I have to tell you something. <clears throat> I feel like when you're talking here in this moment that I'm listening to words coming from a very, very holy soul. Um, God is purifying you. Um, he, I think, is very actively engaged in everything that's going on right now. He always is. <clears throat> but he is using all of this to your very best spiritual advantage. And just listening to you, you know, I don't know if you have a spiritual director, but if you do, I would talk with your spiritual director and share exactly what you've shared with me. It sounds to me very much, <clears throat> excuse me, like you were going through a dark night. Uh, a dark night according to uh, the, the teachings of St. John of the Cross. Um, and everything that you're describing leads me to believe that that's what's happening. And that has to happen before there can be true union with Christ. The spiritual marriage can't take place without a dark night. <laughs> Let me take a little sip of water here. Um, and, yeah. you know, I, 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 I would encourage you <coughs> just to continue 
to prevail in your time of prayer. Um, the evil one will tempt us with all kinds of um, diabolical thoughts. He will try to confuse us. He will try to take our focus off of Jesus. He will use everything in his power to dissuade us because he sees how close, how close the soul is approaching. Yeah. And it terrifies yeah, him, you see. And so as a result of that, he will, he will do everything that he can. And the remedy, the only remedy, is to draw closer, closer to Jesus, closer to the cross, closer to yeah. that moment when he says, you know, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, to draw into that moment with him. <coughs> and the evil one cannot get you there because you're accepting it and you're receptive to it. And, and such yeah, beauty yeah. takes place within your soul. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say that, you know, before I was hospitalized, and, you know, I went to, I went to Lourdes in the year 2000, yes. and I had really an uh, uh, um, experience where I learned that suffering was, you know, a great, uh, it was a gift that I could, I could right. offer for souls. Oh, and, yes. And I, I, you know, I, I was with all that. And, you know, I, for a long time, I, you know, I've, doing all these things, and I actually thought I had actually, um, you know, I had been, um, uh, I got my freak out to me, and I had to get on a ventilator, like, a few years ago, and I, I, I thought I had been through the dark night, it seems mm-hmm. like I, you know, and I had experiences of the, the that, uh, that union, but it seems like I'm, it's, it's regressed. Something like, like you know, because of all, all that. You know? Every <laughs> that, soul feels I mean, that way. The closer it draws to the Lord, and the closer the Lord draws a soul to Himself, every soul yeah. feels as though they regress. Um, that uh, every everything that you're saying indicates this. It could have been the dark uh, night of the senses, uh, which generally will precede. Uh, precede the dark night of the soul and the dark night of the soul is not always like you know a season it it generally does have a season but within the midst of that season there can be variations that happen so uh, you see god was preparing you in lords for this moment um, and he was giving you a foretaste and he was also really uh you know giving you a word of knowledge about what was going to come and he was encouraging you through that word, that in the moment when it arrives, uh, you would recall it and you would realize and recognize that, you know, he's about to work. Um, and we, we cling to that truth, no matter how hard it is to cling to it, no matter how the evil one fights against us. Yeah. yeah. You're such a gentle person, Harold. I mean, and, and what I mean, so oh, it's so true. I mean, there's just such meekness in you, it's, which is such a holy virtue. Sometimes it's, it's hard to keep... Um, keep hope yeah. you know but I, I have hope but sometimes it's it's difficult to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel i know but it's there mm-hmm. yeah so would you like to pray for a minute yes okay all right it it brings me such joy to pray with you harold really it just does yeah. so father god we come before you in this moment and here we are father all of us together in this moment beautiful moment, a graced moment. And your son, Harold, has taught us so much <laughs> through his witness today. It makes me cry, Lord. He's, he's, he's taught us so, so much. Um, you know, Father God, it's beautiful when we see your humility, when we see your meekness, when we see your love, uh, your tenderness, when we see all of these great virtues uh, uh, being presented to us through the witness of another and the capacity to gaze on your reality, even as uh, the, the, the soul is emitting them to us. And um, your son needs to experience in some special way the fact that he's not abandoned nor forsaken. He, he embraces what you have offered to him, Lord. But his spiritual thirst needs to be slaked, Lord. Uh, and so I would ask that... Uh, You would give him uh, the sweet taste, the sweet taste uh, of your consolation, uh, even if just for a moment, Lord, uh, even if just for uh, a nanosecond, 
that he might be refreshed enough to continue to pursue the path that you have him on. And this moment in his spiritual life, you tell us that your hour has not yet come and then your hour comes. Um, this is an hour for, for Harold. And we know that even as you felt forsaken by your father, um, you were taking all of our forsaken moments into that moment. And you were procuring for us that, that certitude and that grace that we need to have to persist in those moments of feeling forsaken, abandoned, rejected, betrayed. In those moments where we feel denied, where we feel abused, uh, where we feel as though no one understands. Uh, when what we see is the recourse that we need is, is no longer present to us, we need that grace. And so I call down from heaven now that grace for your son, Harold. And I ask that that sweet, sweet, sweet taste of consolation that will slake his thirst will come. That sweet water of your provision will come. Father, I thank you for this grace that we've received on Holy Thursday. And I, I thank you, Father, for all that, that, that will come to us in this Holy Triduum. May our hearts be open and receptive. May we seek it. May we lay hold of it. May we permit it to lay hold of us that we might be forever changed by it, Lord, transformed by it, Lord that we might experience the abundance that you have in mind for us, no matter how it comes presented to us, no matter the dark shroudings that it wears, no matter how deep a purple is its garment, we pray that we will see you and we will know you in the moment. And so we offer you this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the merits of his cross, through the power of of the Holy Spirit, and with the maternal beatitude and intercession of our Blessed Lady. And you know, Harold, I want to tell you, Our Lady is so close to you. She is right by your side. She never leaves you, Harold, never leaves you. And just turn to her, and her eyes of mercy will be upon you, and you will see the Lord in her eyes. You will see the Spirit of the living God in her eyes, mystically, you'll see her and you'll see them. The Trinitarian Amen. God is with you. Amen? God bless you, Harold. God bless you too. God Thank bless you. everyone listening. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so, so much. Ah, oh, may God be praised. Um, what, a, what a beautiful, beautiful moment we've shared together today. <clears throat> Maybe it's a sign of what God wants to do in us through this triduum, huh? Maybe... Maybe he's revealing something to us right now. I don't know. I feel like he is. I, I just feel like the studio is just has been wrapped in wings of angels and the mantle of Our Lady and that we're all being drawn into something very special right now. So, you know, don't let the moment pass. Um, I, I, we will move forward in our program here. But I want to encourage you, uh, please, please spend time reflecting upon this moment. Take it with you tonight uh, to the Lord's Supper. Let God affect what he wants to affect in you. Don't hold anything back from him. Give it all to him. Be open and receptive to him. Receive everything he has in mind for you. Because it is glorious. And it is transformative. Well, here we are. We have Mary with us. <clears throat> We don't have Mary with us. We're right to the end of the program today, and here comes the music. So sorry, Mary, I didn't get to you today, but baby, we invite you to give us a call back. Okay, we're going to be back with you uh, next week on, on Monday, and we certainly do hope uh, that we can spend more moments of grace together. <laughs> That's what I feel we've experienced together today, dear friends. May God be praised for all that he is about, and may this triduum be filled with every spiritual blessing in the heavens for you. May you taste the abundance of the Lord, and may you see that he loves you and his way is there for you. We invite you to take advantage of all of the good things available for you on EWTN Radio through the Triduum, through this Holy Week, EWTN.com slash radio for a complete listing of all that is there for you. Have a blessed, holy, wonderful Easter. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.